Hey guys, it's Ruben from Dove. I'm here with Gia, Shannon, and Alec. So today we've got a really interesting topic, which is how to add production value and emotion to videos. So Shannon is, is my personal favorite filmmaker, and he's going to be kind of showing us some tips and tricks. I would say that this is a, definitely a beginner course. This does not require the software that he's using, um, Adobe Premiere. You can use this with uh, a number of video editing platforms. Um, iMovie or Vega or InVideo or any of the ones that are online. Um, it's very simple cuts, B-roll footage, music. Um, so it's going to be really good. Uh, and then we're also actually going to show Alec uh, specifically on how to add waveforms to video. So if you guys notice on our podcasts, what we do is we have waveform videos. And Hello? those, those, what was it? Oh, you want, you want some music? Okay, we'll add some music. That, that's actually exactly what we're going to do. She wants to hear a song. So we're going to show Alec how to create waveform videos Coco? on. Coco? <laughs> okay, we'll play Coco. Uh, how to add waveform? Um, the little squiggly things. Anyway, Shannon, I'm out. You, you do take it from here. Coco. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ruben. Um, yeah. yeah. So welcome to the broadcast. Uh, the first thing we're just going to go over a quick editing tutorial. Um, so hang in there with me, Alec. Uh, we're going to get to some questions really soon. Um, but uh, we're just gonna, yeah, go over go over this tutorial. So I'm gonna share my screen, and we're gonna jump into Premiere. Um, so here we go. This is Premiere Pro, um, and I brought in a clip into a timeline. Um, what you do to to import if you're new to Premiere, you go file. Uh, import clip, but you know what? We're, I don't really want to get into the technicals in this video. This is not really an editing tutorial, so much more than how to add emotionality, how to add a little bit of production value to a video. So it's not so much an editing tutorial, such as just a few pointers on how to add emotionality uh, to a business video. So um, yeah, so let's switch back in here. This is a clip. Let's just watch this clip uh, of Ruben here for a moment. I don't think there's sound on this. But guess what? You can't. Oh, now we got sound. It's happening oh, every yeah, yeah, single day. There are live people broadcast. out there that are just. All right, we had technical difficulties. We're going to do that one more time with sound. Um, sorry about that. Here we go one more time. So this is just for context. This is the, this is the source clip that we want to then edit. So we're going to edit this clip. This is the unedited raw file. Um, so I'm going to show that to you now. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. So much of being an entrepreneur is just about being completely and totally ignorant. As an entrepreneur, you actually think that you can, you can build something. You actually think that you can create a company, disrupt an industry, innovate in something that's been used and created and done for dozens, if not more of years. It's so foolish and naive to actually think that you can change the world. But guess what? You can. You can, and it's happening every single day. There are people out there that are disrupting entire industries. I mean, the D to C movement is such a classic example of that, where companies can come out of nowhere and they can turn into unicorns. They can turn into billion dollar companies because there was something broken, it's something very inefficient, or it takes too much time for something to get to someone, to their front door, or the experience is poor, or the cost is too much. DTC is such a great example. Steve Jobs said it best, stay foolish, stay hungry. Stay foolish, stay hungry. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, yeah, so what I'm gonna do, that's the source clip, so I'm gonna do a few little tweaks to make uh, to make that a little bit more compelling, to add some emotionality to that video. This will just take one minute. 
Um, and then and that'll be over. This will only take one minute, I promise. So put on a 60 second timer on me right now. Uh, so here we go. Try to add emotionality to a video in 60 seconds. Here we go. Put the timer on. Um, uh, 29, 28. Yeah, no, no, I was go. thinking so about. Here's this video. I mean, I guess the video itself is a minute. So maybe give me three minutes. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking about um, this. I was thinking about this. So much. So I'm going to cut out the moment where he repeats itself in the beginning there. I'm just going to do a simple trim. You can do trimming edits in any kind of editor. You don't have to be using Premiere Pro. I'm using Premiere Pro. You can do iMovie. Just don't even on your phone. You can trim. So. About this. I was thinking about this. So much of being an entrepreneur is just about. And I'm going to say here. I'm actually, I'm actually not even. I'm going to trim away the whole. I'm thinking about this part because that doesn't really add. I'm going to start with the most relevant section right here. So much of being an entrepreneur is just about being completely and totally ignorant. So that's a very compelling clickbait open. I'm gonna trim out the gaps in between where he's sort of thinking and breathing to just get the pace to, uh, to speed up a little bit. So much of being an entrepreneur is just about being completely and totally ignorant. So see how that just flowing a little bit more. You're five seconds in. You're already hooked. That's that's a good that's a good start. Um, so I'm gonna refine my cuts a little bit. I'm just using the Q and W uh, keys on the keyboard, by the way, to make these cuts. Q will trim the beginning and W trim the end. Those are for Premiere Pro users. But again, you can do these kind of edits in any kind of uh, editing software. So as an entrepreneur, you now I'm not gonna go too detailed with this editing. Again, I only have one minute. Ignorant. As an entrepreneur, you actually think this. that you can you can build something. You actually think that you can create a company disrupt an industry, innovate in something that's been used. Now I'm going to go double speed to kind of watch this and double speed to uh, review it. Created and done for dozens, if not more, of years. It's so foolish and naive to actually think you can't control it. Like, you can't. You can't. Like, every single day there are people out there that are disrupting entire industries. I mean, the D2C movement is such a classic example of that, where companies can come out of nowhere and they can turn into you. Okay, so one thing this needs is music. So we're going to get a music track that you have to get kind of beforehand, get a good track that you like. Um, and import that into your project. Uh, and we're gonna put a music track under this. I can see that already. It's actually pretty good. Just reviewing this clip already, um, most of the clip is, is pretty good. Um, it just really needs some music. I edited the beginning a little bit so it's compelling. The first three seconds of a video are so important on social media. Um, you know, those first three seconds, even first 10 seconds are super important. So make sure those first 10 seconds are important, get them hooked. Uh, and then the rest of the video, and again, this is just, um, adding a little emotionality. Not all videos need this at all. Um, videos, videos can just be cool when they're raw and real, but if you want to add a little bit of emotionality, this is how to do that. Um, so let me switch back to Premiere. Being completely and totally ignorant. As an entrepreneur, you... So now we have some music under... I actually think that you can, you can build something. You and I'm going to go, I'm going to jump to a part of the song that is upbeat actually think that you can create a company, disrupt an industry, innovate in something that's been used and created. Okay, cool. I'm going to bring in the dub logo. Um, I'm going to put that on the timeline. Now it's a transparent logo, so let's see what we can do. Now putting a logo As an entrepreneur, you... It's just a way to really brand the video, and especially if that logo is in the first, um, let's say, 10 seconds. Again, that's another way, because if someone's not interested in your video uh, and they just keep scrolling in the timeline, at least they've seen your logo. So it's really important to get your logo in there. I'm just creating a color mat to put under that. There we go, there's a white color mat. There's our dub logo, looking good. So much of being an entrepreneur is just about being completely and totally ignorant. As an entrepreneur, you actually think that you can, you can build. There you go. So it's coming together. Um, we have all these other clips. Uh, this is called B-roll. Now, you can bring this B-roll in and review it and overlay it. Um, and that can be a whole process. You can spend hours sort of cutting together. Oh, here you go. This is actually my B-roll in this folder here. Um, you can spend half an hour, hour or more just kind of like going through B-roll. Um, you can do it in as short as five minutes too if you really know what you want. Like here, it's all kind of pre-selected. We have some 
some good clips. Um, I just have to resize it for this. We have some basic B-roll shots. Um, and yeah, so you kind of like make sure they're scaled down. It's really important to remember framing. Framing is really important. Now, these are just basic tenets of, of editing. Um, and when you add B-roll over your videos, it adds a little bit of dynamism, but also adds some emotionality. It's something that's been used and created and done for dozens, if not more. Years. So it's so foolish. So that person's very happy. Foolish and naive to actually think. So we get some emotionality. You see the happy person. Um, you got the logo in the video. You have some music. Um, that's a quick overview of some very simple things that you can do to just kind of boost up your videos. Um, music, graphics, and a few light edits for content. Um, and a little bit of B-roll. That's like, that's icing on the cake. If you put the B-roll uh, in there, that's icing on the cake for sure. Um, so let's bring Ruben in. What are your, as someone like a video editor, I'm oh, sorry, are you there? Um, as someone who's a video editor, like this is normal, this is natural to me. I, I talk and video editors speak. Um, what are your key takeaways for someone who isn't a video editor? What, what, what can they do to add emotionality to their videos? Well, I mean, the thing, the thing from my perspective is, is, is that music adds so much. Mm -hmm. When we add music to, to our videos, it just adds a certain emotion. And uh, so that's the first thing. So there's, there's, a, there's some great royalty-free music platforms out there. You know, we use Epidemic Sound, um, which is one of the more expensive ones. Um, but there's a lot. If you search online, there's there's dozens of them. Um, ben, bensound.com is that's a completely royalty free one. So Ben Sound, I'll put that link right here. Um, all those songs you can just down them. I don't even think you need to have attribution, um, but I'll just put that link right here. So that that's where I start. And then I think the other thing is that people often there's this idea of you know check out my check out my stuff, check out my my coffee mug, check out my wallet, check out where I, I'm at. And a lot of people, I don't think it's not very relevant, you know, where you are, what you're doing, get into your point, get into your most important point. That's what people want to hear about the value that you're providing. So I'd say that those are the really two quick things that I would say. And then the rest of them are, are you know, B-roll, obviously, if you can get B-roll, there's some great services out there, some great sites where you can get um, coverage. We recommend if you're going to use this on a frequent basis, we recommend getting a subscription service where it's all you can eat. And uh, we recommend, uh, what, what's the one that we use? I don't recall. I think it's called Video Blocks, actually. So that's the one that we recommend. So those are my notes. Thanks for listening. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ruben. Um, yeah, so now we're going to shift gears a little bit. I'm going to bring a guest onto the broadcast. Um, Alec, welcome to the broadcast. Welcome to Dub Live. Um, we're going to go through creating waveforms. Uh, you know, I, I think everyone has seen a waveform podcast video at this point. If you're scrolling on LinkedIn or on Twitter or on Facebook, you know, when you have a podcast and you want to promote it, um, you want to make it kind of interesting to look at on the social platform. So you make a little quick video, you, you select a minute out of it, and uh, and of course, if you know how to do this, you can add a little waveform that makes it kind of interesting that syncs to the audio. Um, so we're going to go over that really quick and then I can answer any other questions you have. Um, so uh, there's several different ways to do this actually. You can use uh, the first one, I'm just gonna switch over um, to a service that we Okay, here, you can hear me now. I'm sorry for that brief interruption. Um, so you have to have uh, an After Effects subscription, subscription um, to make waveforms that are without like paying for a service. Um, oh, we just have a cool comment right here. Check out audio. Thank you for those comments. By the way, comment down below if you want to uh, get involved um, into the conversation. We love live streams. Um, but to make a waveform for a video, uh, we recommend using either 
a service that you pay for or just doing it yourself with After Effects. And of course, you have to get the After Effects subscription to do that. But I think this is the easiest way to do it. Um, you can see my screen here. Yeah, you can see my screen. So this is music visualization from Veed.io. Um, and Veed.io is a really cool service that actually they have several different video editing applications um, and uh, more like tools under one subscription. So I think it is $40 a month or $20 a month. Um, let's see the pricing here. Again, I'm not, this is not sponsored at all. <laughs> You can get a free version. They have a free, so it's $20 a month. You can get it for free as well. There's a whole bunch of other services that do this, by the way, so they're definitely not the only one. Um, again, not sponsored, but we just, I like, I personally like this service, uh, and they have a visualization feature. Let me pull that up just so you can see what it looks like. Um, now, again, in a minute, I'm actually going to go over how to do this just by yourself in After Effects. But this is what it, it kind of looks like, where you have a waveform below the video. Um, so you can do that with the software. It's pretty easy. Uh, and you know, I can do a demo on that later. You can check out the Dub Live channel on YouTube or any of our social media. Um, and we'll do another live stream on using Veed uh, if you want to walk through on that. Or I can do a walkthrough after this. Um, and then using After Effects is a little bit more complicated. Um, but uh, but yeah, but that is an option. You have to get After Effects. You have to know After Effects. Um, let me bring Alec onto the broadcast. This is really answering your question. Um, do you want something that's more plug and play and easy to to use, or do you want a more customizable technical application like After Effects? What are you looking for to create this? And what other questions? As well, well I, I'm not a graphics guy who has uh, After Effects at all. So I was looking more for an app that does this. I had seen uh, VDIO uh, and the waveforms, but I haven't seen the waveform that uh, Ruben is using, which is the one I was really interested in. I haven't seen that on V, so I wondered how you were actually doing that specific uh, waveform on the dub videos. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah, I'd love to. I can show you how I'm doing that right now. Um, it's using software called Adobe After Effects. Let me pull up the the Adobe site. Um, and there is a monthly subscription for that software. I believe it's around the thirty dollars range as well. Um, they change their pricing every every so often, and you have. Um, but it's it's definitely pro software. Um, but it is. The learning curve, you know, you can you can use it. And I'll give you a walk a walkthrough of how to do that right now if you want. Yeah, it'd be really good to see how it's done. But uh, as I say, I've seen the waveforms, I've seen at the bottom of the videos, but it was really superb the way that we see it on the, the dub video. So that's what I was looking to model. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. So, okay, cool. So let's uh, let, let's show you. I mean, this is After Effects right here, um, and this is on Adobe.com. It's used by Hollywood uh, inside industry professionals to make uh, compositing visual effects for big Hollywood feature films. Um, but what's so cool in the in the modern age <laughs> is that these these tools are now open. I mean, anyone can download them onto their computer. Um, so, you know, professionals in Hollywood are using these tools, but now uh, anyone can use them as well. So I'm going to open up After Effects. So After Effects is going to take a minute to open up because um, it's a very hefty program. So while it's opening up, I'm just going to talk a little bit um, first of all, do you have any questions? Uh, Alec, do you have any other questions um, about this? Do you want, um, like, uh, or do you want me to just do the walkthrough and, and cover that? Yeah, if you do the walkthrough, I think I'll be able to understand. It's just I've never used After Effects before, so that's the only okay. new thing. Got it. So I will, I will do this walkthrough as um, assuming that you're completely new to After Effects. Um, 
Sounds good. And again, this is like pretty advanced. This is, let's, this is I'd consider this an advanced tutorial. Um, After Effects is used in Hollywood, uh, you know, all that stuff. But it's it's actually I wouldn't I wouldn't be afraid of it though. It's still it's still uh, pretty intuitive now. Um, and there's a lot of tutorials out there. Um, there's a lot of resources for this too. But I will give you my tutorial. I've worked in the film industry for ten years. That's my background. Um, over 10 years uh, and and yeah it's um I've used After Effects since I was 12 years old I can say that confidently <laughs> so it's it's been a journey for me with After Effects so this is the this is a piece of software that I deeply admire um, I'm gonna quit Premiere so first thing you do when you open After Effects is you're going to um, make a new project like you do in any sort of application. So I'm gonna wait for that panel to load. Should just take a second. I closed Premiere so I should have some extra bandwidth. Actually, you know what, a new project window is open. This is like a welcome window that welcomes users, but I'm a pro so I can skip that. Um, we can go ahead and just create a new project and so go file, new, new project. Um, so once you have that new project, it'll look just like this, and it'll say untitled project at the top. The first thing you want to do is create a new composition. Now you can click this button right here, uh, or you can click this button down here, create a new composition. Now this step is important because this will determine the size of your video. So you know, in social media you have 16 nine videos, uh, you have square videos, you have vertical videos, uh, those are different resolutions. So what I re would recommend for a podcast waveform video is, is I'd, re I'd recommend the square uh, format because that works really well on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. On social media, square seems to be one of the preferred formats. So I'm going to do 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. I'm going to name this podcast waveform. I'm going to hit OK. That will create my composition. Now everything else should be default. I mean, this stuff, you know, aspect ratio, square pixels, frame rate, 30 frames per second. You know, you want to make sure that's there, but usually that's default set to a to a good spot. Um, but again, you can quick, you know, take a screenshot. You want 30 frames per second, square pixels, 1,000 by 1,000. You click OK. That'll create a new composition for you. So now you see a white square, um, and what you can do here is like, okay, well, anything. That's the cool thing about After Effects. You can make an asteroid come down and, and explode a building. You can make a car flip over, or you can make a podcast waveform. That's what inspired me as a 12-year-old to get into this uh, software. And now here I am, so many years later, <laughs> um, being able to do it. And so that's why I'm grateful, and that's why I enjoy this. But um, it is it is... This is, I guess I, I say that because, you know, a lot of people say this kind of software is very complex, um, but usually they say that because they're trying to sell you a tutorial. I want to try to inspire people to use the software. It actually is fun to use, um, and anyone can use it. Even if the pros use it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can use it too. So that's my little rant on that while I'm finding this um, audio file. So I'm going to get an audio file that I'm going to use. and. This is the podcast file uh, that you've recorded. Now you can use a video as well. Um, in in the videos that you've seen, actually on Rubens, we we use we use video. So not all not everyone records video with their podcast. Now if you do record video in your podcast, um, like we do, then you can add video to the social media video that goes out with the waveform. So I'm going to use that because, as you said, you want to see exactly how we do it. So you you can do this with just an audio file, but we use video, so might as well do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use an example video, um, and so I'm just going to find a random example video. Here we go. So the first thing you do is imagine this video is the podcast video. Now you can record that in Zoom. You could record a podcast video uh, using Zoom or Skype when you record that podcast. That'll record the audio and the video. 
Um, now you take that file that Zoom or Skype gives you, you import it into After Effects. Now you can either drag or drop it into the project window here, or you go File, Import, and then File. That'll import the file into After Effects. Um, now, once you have the file in the project window, you can drag it into the composition that I just created. So if you see there's a podcast waveform composition here, if you double click that, that I created in the first step, and then you drag that file into the timeline, you see now I have that file in the timeline. I just dragged it twice, so I had it twice, but um, now I have it just a single file in the timeline. But remember that this is a square file, and mostly in Skype and Zoom, they record 16.9. So you're going to have to resize it. So if you twirl this menu down, you can go into scale, and there's numbers here, 100%. You can just scale it down. So now you can see here that the video is um, square here. Now if I go to, it's also white here. I can change the background to make this a little bit more clear. I'm going to change the background to black. There we go. So as you can see, I've scaled it down. And if you slide the slider, you can see it gets bigger and smaller. So I'm scaling it down to fit within square. Let's see if we're still good. Um, I'm using Adobe After Effects. Sorry if I'm missing any of the comments. I'm just so focused on uh, so focused on the live stream. But yes, I'm using Adobe After Effects to do this. Um, OK, here we go. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, how do you add a waveform onto this? Um, so you have your composition. You have the video. You've scaled it down. Um, what you're going to do is create a new, you up to the, the menu up here on, if you're on Mac, and uh, a new adjustment layer. It should be similar if you're on PC. Create an adjustment layer. Now you go to Effect. And you go to generate, and then there's two options you could choose: either audio audio spectrum or audio waveform. And for this one, I'm going to use audio waveform. Now you've seen the video disappeared. Uh, don't worry, it's all good. You can just drag the adjustment layer below the clip, and then it'll reappear. Now. I'm going to drag this adjustment layer down so we can see it in action. But as you can notice, even if I drag it down, it, nothing's happening. So what do we do? Um, well, first of all, I have to grab a, I just realized that clip doesn't have audio. So I'm going to use a audio file. So what we're going to do is we're going to pair that waveform, what I just created on that adjustment layer, just to explain what I'm doing here. If you're getting lost, don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to try to explain this best I can. And if you have any questions, I'll definitely answer them. But um, And I'll look at the chat, too. If you're watching live, I'll look at the chat and answer the questions after I'm done here. This will just take two more minutes. I need to pair this adjustment layer to that audio file, the podcast audio file. Now, if the video has audio in it, you would pair it to that. But in this case, I'm going to pair it to this audio file. Uh, to do that, you click on the adjustment layer. You go to the effects controls panel. And I've applied my audio waveform effect in the previous step. Now I'm going to click on, no, yeah, sorry, yeah, you go back. There it is. So adjustment layer. Now there's a little place here. This is audio layer. And if we pull this out, you can see it says adjustment layer one. Now that means the audio layer that it's choosing is the layer that's on. We don't want that. We want it to use the audio from this one. So you select whichever is the source audio for your podcast, whether it's the video or another audio file. And that and now what After Effects will do is automatically generate a waveform to match that. So um, you have to use these little pointer pieces to drag down. And you also have to play around with the different options here. So there's a, many different options in terms of like um, audio offset, audio duration, um, max offset. And you have to get it so that you see the waveform. Because sometimes if your audio is too 
uh, if you're too quiet in the audio, this isn't going to work. So you actually have to have a file that is loud enough um, to do this. Now, what we do here at Dub is we actually make a template that automates this whole thing. So we just have a template. We don't have to do this whole process every time. We have an After Effects template um, where we go in, we set the we set the source, we just replace something, and then everything happens from there. Um, so maybe if I just can jump into the template. I was gonna I was just gonna interject real quick, Shannon, and just say a couple of notes here, just to give context yeah, on, on why. Why do people like these waveform visuals in their videos? What problem does it solve? And I, I've been thinking about this a lot, and it, here's what I think happens. The algorithms on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, well, obviously YouTube, but everything, they, they favor video as, as a medium, okay? They want video. And the reason why they want video is because they make more advertising revenue from it because video ads are charged on a CPM basis, not a CPC, sometimes, not always, sometimes. And that sometimes with longer videos, you can have multiple video ads. YouTube is famous for this. They'll have on 10, 15, 20 minute videos, you'll have two or three commercial breaks. And that's really how they monetize the whole situation. So when we add waveform visuals to videos, there's a couple of things that are happening. Number one is it's adding, it's taking something that's static and audio only and turning it into a video format. And then number two is that it's it's eye candy. It's visually, visually engaging. When people see that in their feed, it looks neat. It looks cool. We're like moths to the flame. So we are attracted to that, and then of course we go and we engage with it. And I think the last thing, though, is that it just looks professional. Instead of having a flat image, or you know, a kind of a poor video call, you know, sometimes it actually looks a lot more professional. You can use a bio shot. You can have a nicely designed graphic. So you know, we recommend people to kind of pick whatever is comfortable for you. Um, Shannon did mention that we have a template for this, so we have our own waveform template. And I, I've never actually thought of this. I'd love to get Shannon's um, take on this, but you know, maybe we should offer some sort of a in, in a Google Drive folder. You know, maybe we should give uh, the template away, and that way you can kind of drop your video, change the text, um, and it should it should change it automatically. Now, the reality though is that you are going to have to use Adobe After Effects, and Adobe After Effects, as you guys can tell, it is it's a slightly intimidating software. It's it's one of the software programs that I've just been never, never able to kind of figure out. You know, I sort of ended my experience on Adobe After Effects at level one. And since then, I just, I haven't really been able to do it. So I kind of live and thrive within a template situation. Um, well, the other I can show you exactly how complex it can get in terms of. Um, oh yeah, let's see that. Like, <laughs> so here's, here's our, here's our file here. This is our template. Um, and what I was trying to do before is just, pair the waveform to the target video. Um, and on our template here, we've kind of automated that. And like Ruben said, we could actually potentially share that to the wider community. But it's on this little drop down right here. And you pair it to the track. So let's say track 20 is our podcast track. You click there, it pairs. And then now you see there's our video. And the waveform is happening around it. Now it's rendering in slow motion, because that's how After Effects works. But um, you can see how it's that waveform is happening around it. So now, when you dive into the settings here, just to show how complex this is, you might think, "Oh, this is only three tracks." Well, if you show all the hidden tracks, um, then there's a whole bunch of hidden tracks here that actually make this happen. Uh, and it's so it's a lot. It's it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. And you can unfold all of these tracks too. And each of these is another realm. That you can dive into, so um, it's it's interesting. So I've built this so it's kind of drag and drop uh, for any virtual assistants or um, any you know anyone really could 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 drag and drop. All you have to do is go into the project window here and replace this file. If you see, there's replace right here. You just right click on that, replace footage, and select file. Um, and then the only other thing you have to do is you have to select the resolution down here. So if it's 1080p. You have to have a little switch for viewing it, and you have to turn that off and turn this one on if it's 720. Um, that's all you have to do. Once you've set those settings, you just uh, go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and then you select uh, any 
yeah, just lossless. It's perfect right there. The default will be fine. You select the output destination right there, and you hit render, and then the file will export. And you can export, and then you can upload that um, to any social media. Um, so yeah, so it's an interesting, interesting process, interesting way of, of doing it. That's definitely technical, but um, you know, as you can tell, I was diving so deep into it. But if you have a template, and, and we're actually we're thinking of, of giving this away to the community. So comment if you want a template uh, to use. Uh, we've been thinking about uh, sharing that template. Um, but um, you can actually just follow this tutorial. I know, it, I, I know it got confusing there sometimes, but if you follow step by step what I was saying, uh, you can also just do it without a template. If you set that audio waveform to the destination um, of, of the podcast video, After Effects will automatically generate that waveform and you can customize it however you want. You saw that uh, it went all the way around the video screen. Um, let me see if I can pull that up. Um, it went all the way around the video, the, the waveform. That's because I created a mask, um, a mask around that. So if I hide this, you can see that it's just the waveform um, that's the mask. And without the video, this is what it looks like. Um, so you can make that path to anything you want. You can have any type of shape you would ever imagine. Um, I can even go in here and change that on the fly even, potentially. Um, if I go in, I have to un go into this whole crazy world. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So um, here's, like, here's one. If I change that little, now I'm changing the, that little thing. Now it's going to go off to the side. Um, Anyways, with After Effects, there's a, there's a lot of different levels, but at least uh, you can use a template or at least play with it, and um, and that's how you learn. By just opening After Effects and at least trying these things, I know it sounds complex, but um, the more that you do it and the more that you click around, the more that it does make sense. Um, and again, there's a lot of tutorials out there online as well. I know if you look on YouTube, Waveform, After Effects tutorial, there's one, but there's not one quite how I'm doing it. I've, I've kind of invented... <laughs> I'm going to take credit here for inventing a, a specific style of, of After Effects waveform. So um, anyway, so that's a quick tutorial on that. Awesome. Alec, any other questions? <clears throat> no, I, I think you've shown how difficult it is uh, for anybody to go in with After, um, after Effects if you don't know it. Uh, but... I follow Ruben, I, I would be stage one. I'm willing to go to stage one. But I think if you were to offer a template, as you say, with a dub subscription, that would be a great incentive to, uh, you know, to, to knock it over. And if you could make a... A video five steps to make a video podcast like Ruben. Well, that's a winner, I, I think. So, awesome. uh, I was rather hoping that you were using an app like uh, Veed to mm. do it, but um, Veed just doesn't give that waveform, and it was that waveform that makes it engaging rather than the you know the Veed waveforms i've seen so um it you know that's why i made contact to to see how you had done it you've shown it but it would be too complicated for me to go in with after effects and do that but if there's some simple way with a template that would be uh, really good really appreciate it well i i think that um since you are going to be in the dub family as a subscriber we will uh we'll make this happen for you absolutely absolutely we will support you. yeah absolutely of course i'll be there i i have a question that you may not uh, expect but may i ask it so yeah. Ruben, I've seen you're making great videos. Uh, I really love them. But what I notice is that you have very little likes on the videos. So, you know, you're only getting 
15, 18, 20 at most. You know, on my first video, I got over 100. So I'm wondering why people are not liking or engaging with your videos when I think they're so great. Is there some reason for that in some way? I think that's a really good question. And we think about we think about our engagement rates a lot. And the thing that we're doing is we're kind of building a canon of, of content. So we call it the waterfall method. And our our content really starts in long form. It starts as a podcast. It starts as um, a YouTube video or a longer, maybe 10 to 40 minute video or multiple videos. And then it kind of waterfalls down to individual channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even Periscope that we're doing on um, uh, through Twitter. And on some channels, longer form content does not get the engagement. It just doesn't. Our videos are two to six minutes long sometimes. Sometimes they're 10 minutes long. And the problem is this, is that in order to get the visibility algorithmically on the channels, you need to have certain watch rates. So that's where it starts. It starts with our is a critical mass of people watching through the first three seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then 30 seconds. And then based on that viewability and those watch rates, then you, you get more visibility on the social channels. So one of the things that we have learned is that some of our longer form videos, especially on Facebook and, and sometimes LinkedIn, they just, they don't get that visibility. They don't, they don't get the, the eyeballs. And then as a result, they don't get the likes. So what we've kind of decided to do, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but within the last week or two, actually, what we've decided to do is kind of respect this idea of having long form content on long form channels like YouTube, but then having short form content on ephemeral social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. That way we kind of respect people's times. They're busy. They only have 60 seconds, two minutes to watch a quick little video and then you know, we're in and we're out, right? So this video here, it's coming up on 42 minutes. I don't expect <laughs> to get a lot, a lot of likes on this video. I don't want to get a lot of likes, actually. I want to get intentional, intentional likes. I want to get high impact viewers, not vanity metrics. Um, now, that said, from this video, in the spirit of the waterfall method, it will get cut up into shorter videos and we'll find key moments, pithy, very educational key moments within this. And then those then will get disseminated out onto the social networks so that we can get a little bit more likes, more visibilities and, and just have more fun and kind of respect people's time. So I hope that answers your question. Um, but I really appreciate that feedback. Yeah. I mean, and, and, uh, kind of content for us is kind of like an investment in a, in a stock on a stock market. You know, you, um, you build up your, your portfolio and there's a long-term return on certain platforms like YouTube. Um, there's a shorter term return on other platforms like LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, but actually that value metric changes all the time um, depending on what the algorithm does. So sometimes our, you know, a video will get like, it'll pop off. It'll, it'll be crazy. It'll be tons of likes, a lot of views coming in comments, if the algorithm chooses it. Um, and then depending on what happens with the algorithm, uh, you know, that'll shift with the tide. So we're always kind of aware of that. Um, but no matter what the viewership is, like to Ruben's points, going into that larger uh, investment um, into, into building something that we can then go back and pull from mm -hmm. this to make into a documentary or into a larger piece. Um, and then the second thing is also that we here at Dub, we, just, we go across I think it's six or seven different social networks. So, you know, you see that video there, but really uh, across all channels, it maybe got like, you know, 50 or 60 likes and, you know, more views and um, across all channels combined. So on that one post, cause we repost things, we, um, we do a lot of that as well. So, so it's, it's interesting how it happens and really we're not a uh, metric focused. We're more value focused and, you know, it's, it's in it for the long haul and you have to be in some sense aware of that. And, and the data definitely helps you to, to iterate the content. But, um, but yeah, in, in a certain level, you have to, uh, you have to really take the, the bigger picture, say across all channels, across all networks. Um, cause if you invest in just one and then they change their algorithm, then that can be bad. So you have to, you have to see where you're investing in. 
you don't want to just go all in on one because then if they switch, shift their algorithm, then you're in a bad place. So we try to go up to as many as possible. Yes, uh, <clears throat> my focus is LinkedIn. Uh, from a, you know, I'm I'm looking at the professional market. I'm really fixed on uh, LinkedIn as my business channel, going for the professionals, and uh, they have a lot of uh, people selling coaching services and uh, other things. I'm so you know going to be in the uh, the. When you engage with somebody, I want to immediately react to them, say thank you, and follow on from that. And I think, you know, that would appeal to a LinkedIn market, maybe not to a YouTubers or others, you know. So, yeah, um, I guess, it's, uh, yeah, I, I thought maybe you were recording and splitting up and, you know, dividing, yeah. repurposing a, a lot, but. Uh, as I say, such good videos, but um, well, thank not, you so much. Not the hits on LinkedIn. So, well, uh, we appreciate interesting. we appreciate your support. Um, thank you for saying that they're good. I mean, we try to focus on. I mean, I'm I'm the editor on a lot of them, so I'm definitely attached to them. But um, yeah, we try to. We're always improving. They're never. We try to do them on an almost daily cycle. So sometimes they're not perfect and we're always learning. Some are better than others, but it's it's not really, it's it's about really creating things and something that we believe in. And um, and we think the more that we do that, that builds over time. So it's people like you that recognize that. Um, so thank you. It's all about those one-to-one -one connections. So thank you for, for seeing that. Yeah. And another thing I found, uh, just being, uh, you know, a starter if you like um, I'm not a novice but coming in and utilizing the video on LinkedIn that's where I'm going but I've noticed your app is absolutely fantastic where you're able to record a certain amount and then follow up a little bit later with a bit more and a bit more I've not really seen that on any supplies video apps and i don't think the the video app is your mainstream product but it it has a lot of uh uh unique selling points on its own irrespective of the the dub as a, as a video app uh, recording so i think you've got great potential there as well 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 thank you for saying that that means a lot we've put a lot of time into that and it's a it's an absolute innovation you know our vision of the app and and really editing and and visual storytelling a lot of it um we actually owe to to shannon leonard who you know from from day one since we started working together he has had this vision of of the ability to self-produce and not despite this is a little bit of a paradox because he just showed you how technical he truly is when he opens up the hood but really, at the end of the day, it's about visual storytelling. And, and it actually doesn't matter what technology you have. The best videos that we do are the ones that have zero editing sometimes, not always. Um, and you hear that a lot, that people just do a three-minute rant about something really that they're passionate about, and, and those get the best engagement. Now, of course, you can't do that every week. I mean, you get that maybe a couple times a year. <laughs> but the point, though, is that we really are trying to enable people to leverage video storytelling and visual storytelling. And that app is is really where we're starting it out. Now it's not perfect. We we've got a lot of work to do. You know, we're constantly playing a game of whack-a-mole. Um, we're trying to work through multiple devices. You know, I've on my desk, I've got, you know, one, two, three, four devices right here, just right in front of me. <laughs> and so we're always testing. We're always testing our apps on different platforms to make sure that they're good and uh you know if you guys want to check out the app um go to the app store go to the play store um we've got a really great build actually that's coming next week um with music and with preview and with a really interesting interesting feature called mm -hmm. so you guys you gotta you gotta get the app next week wait what, what did you say oh it's a it's a new feature on an app it's called mm -hmm. I couldn't quite, I couldn't quite hear yeah. you there. 
Well, it's no, it's a simple feature. It's called. Oh, oh okay, yeah. got it. And yeah. it's coming in the app to get on yeah. the app. So you can got on the app store, and of course, we really appreciate reviews. Um, if you could leave us a review on the app store, we really, you know, anyone who's watching, super appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, speaking of reviews, we had a. Um, it's coming up on fifty minutes for this video. Speaking of long form, so um, we should wrap this up in a minute, but. Speaking of reviews, uh, we really, we really need the support as as any technology developer to get that positive feedback from folks. So if you do get a minute, uh, sorry to sound like an infomercial, but if you do get a minute, please go to the App Store, the Play Store, um, podcast, you know, anywhere where you like to leave reviews, Chrome, Chrome Store, uh, please leave us a review. Um, really appreciate that. And if you and if you're not happy with the service, or if there's a bug, or if there's an issue. Um, ask Ruben at dub.com or support dot support at dub.com or both of those. Um, we promise we'll give you full attention and address whatever issues that there are. Great. It's been uh, great being live on StreamYard. I was on yeah. StreamYard myself a few hours ago, so it's a great product as well. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alec. Thanks for coming on. Bye. Talk to you later. Right. Bye. -bye. And if you buy one horsey phone holder today within the next 24 hours, we're going to send you two for absolutely free with free shipping. Wait, wait, what is this? <laughs> Disclaimer, uh, a legal department, legal department um, actually uh, is calling me here. Uh, the previous offers may or may not be included in the dub package. May visit dub.com slash pricing for more details on the full <laughs> offers of dub. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.